Hey YouTube, how's it going? It's your boy, Red Cell Gorilla, being a damn dirty ape out in the woods. Forgive me for bringing this little data pad. However, I've got the memory of a goldfish, and this one's a little bit longer. Kind of wanted to get this one down, and this is about the roles and responsibilities of that gorilla team. Right? So three to six man team, and I say six because I don't have six fingers on this one. Three to six man team, and let's just go ahead and get into it. Now, before we get into gorilla gangs, no, I don't think that a gorilla squad, short squad, or a short team, or a full size fire team, you're not going to go toe to toe with infantry. I get it, right? I've seen Risky Krisky, I've seen. Bear from Bear Nation. Okay, you guys are absolutely right. No, I'm not going toe to toe with the infantry. That's not how you defeat conventional forces. We're talking about asymmetrical warfare, and our main objective is to expel or unalive white cell, right? Expel or unalive white cell. I don't care if they actually leave, like, that's a win, right? And we'll talk about the Taliban again, as I always do. But whenever they expelled White Cell, well, our White Cell, out of Afghanistan, that is a massive win for the Taliban. All right? However, all they did was trade our White Cell, our presidency, yada, 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 for China's White Cell, so China can get that golden roll of it. However, China and... The leaders of the U.S. are under the control of the New World Order, right? World Economic Forum, whatever. We don't care. We know that they go to the fucking meetings together. If it looks like a horse and acts like a horse, it's probably a fucking horse, right? So knowing that White Cell is working together... What All right, you damn dirty apes. So as you can see, I'm going on this very long rant, and I'm trying to keep these videos to like 15 minutes and I go off on a tangent a whole lot for about 45 minutes. So let's just go ahead and get into the gorilla cell dynamics. So unlike in the military where rank is very structured, gorillas who still believe in the Republic have the advantage of voting for and placing their trust in their cell lead. This is very similar to whenever the army was extremely young in 1775 and 1776. You have certain leaders who are fantastic at being leaders, like Henry Knox, who really impressed George Washington with his unit's discipline, or having really shite leaders, which also happens. The military is centralized by rank structure, and platoon leaders are almost always green officers, excluding Mustangs. Platoon leaders must earn the trust of at least their platoon sergeant and squad leaders, who will have years of experience beyond what the platoon leader will have ever done. While certain doctrine is sound, the training the army gives is still against the previous war's enemy. Even in a time of unified land operations, supposedly against Russia, China, and North Korea, the military has been slow to train individuals for peer-to-peer -peer conflict. Up until a few years ago, the army focused on defeating insurgencies and asymmetric fighters, which the military as a whole is not apt to deal with. Killing one insurgent in general galvanizes at least the family of that insurgent. In fact, in Afghanistan, the U.S. military ended up killing nine civilians for every dissident Taliban that they killed. This was plenty of reason for many of the Talibs from Afghanistan and Pakistan to pick up their old AKs and PKMs against the coalition forces. My dislike for the Taliban is extreme because they are a bunch of disgusting pieces of shit, but I do have respect for them as war fighters. Even with a lack of technology, the Taliban made the coalition look like a fucking joke over a 20-year war. I will often point out that these backwater people who are able to throw off the shackles of white cell, even if it took them a 20-year period, they were still able to do it. Now, cell leaders will likely either be the most well-liked or most experienced warfighters. And after a 20-year-long conflict in Iraq, Afghanistan, and other areas in the Middle East and Africa, there are a lot of disillusioned prior service walking about. Even at the most basic levels, young infantrymen of any service in the U.S. are the best at what they do, and that is to tactically engage and destroy the enemy in close combat. In a home conflict, these men and women aren't going to have to ask if they're allowed to kill something or destroy somebody they see as a threat. They're just going to destroy it. 
There's no asking higher. There's no politician waiting on the end of the phone line. Just violence, plain and simple, directed at enemies and perceived enemies. Another bit is these cell leaders probably already have the hatred or indifference in attacking United States white cell. After all, 60,000 soldiers lost their jobs when they fought the DOD over what would have been a trivial matter of individual rights. Because of the moral, ethical, and legal ramifications of forcing the army to take an untested toxic sting, all military branches have un been unable to fill their recruiting quotas. All soldiers clearly receive the message that the army is going to punish soldiers for exhibiting any one of the army's core leadership values. Honor, integrity, and personal courage obviously have no place in the New World Order's army. 60,000 troops use their sacred honor integrity, and personal courage to deny the use of their bodies as test subjects for an untested drug. The Department of Defense sent the clear message that they do not believe in their own core values. The cell leader will need to believe in what he's fighting for, and the others in the cell will need to believe in him. Personally, I suggest the United States Constitution. The original Constitution has nothing to do with racism and everything to do with personal liberties and freedom. The other members are also going to need to meet their designated leader's expectations and shut up and follow orders out in the field. However, give him their say-so whenever they are planning the mission. However, after that mission starts, the small republic ends and no longer exists. That cell leader is in complete control. Now for the cell lead, you're not an 18 alpha, and that's all right, man. The team lead is going to lead his team members by personal example and has the authority over his cell and overall responsibility of their actions. Centralized authority enabled him to maintain cell discipline and unity and act decisively. Under the fluid conditions of close combat, he accomplishes their personal mission using initiative without needing any guidance. During operations, the cell leader is a subject matter expert for all the team's weapons and duty positions and cell battle drills. He leads his cell in fire and maneuver. He controls the movement of a cell and its rate and distribution of fire, ensures the security of the cell's operations area, enforces field discipline and preventative medicine measures, determines his cell's combat load and manages its available classes of supply as required. He understands the mission that they are trying to accomplish in their small area. When maneuvering the cell, he fights using one of three techniques, including individual movement techniques, which is the lowest level of movement, buddy and fire team movement, and fire team fire and maneuver. Determining a suitable technique is based on the effectiveness of the enemy's fire and available cover and concealment. The more effective the enemy's fire, the lower level of movement. Because the cell leader leads his cell, he is able to make this assessment firsthand. Repetition of movement together and separately is extremely important for these operations. Practice makes permanent, and if you as a cell are not training, you are effectively training to fail. If you are training for something that isn't even a probability or is highly improbable, then you haven't completed the basics. And what are you doing if you aren't focusing on the basics? Training at a minimum must include sustainment, medical and small unit operations. The infantry tasks of shoot, move, and communicate also includes sustainment. Soldier manuals like STP 21-1-SMCT, which include common core, core common soldier skills, sorry, and no-go ratings and go ratings with step-by-step -step processes for each task are a good place to start training individuals and selecting those individuals. CC 3-20 has all gunnery and combat gunnery expectations and qualifications, so you don't even need to come up with your own tests. TC 3-22.9 has a ton of information on the M4 and the M16 series rifles. However, if you don't use these, there are new barricade positions and new fighting positions and new shooting positions that the Army is starting to use because they are getting with the times, you bunch of old men. In the case of what is shooting from a realistic position versus just using the prone supported, prone unsupported, and kneeling positions. As the lead, you're probably carrying the rifle but if you are in a three-man team versus a six-man team, you're probably carrying a rifle and a distractionary, distractionary or signaling device, i.e. a 37mm launcher or flare launcher. You're probably going to be carrying that too because using a flare or 
pointing smoke in a certain direction, if that is where the enemy is and you say, hey, you know, follow my smoke and the rest of your team looks at the smoke, they now know what to shoot at. Your weapons guy, unlike in the military where, or as I was, weapons guy, you are not an 18 Bravo and that's okay. You're going to be the tactical mission leader and implement the tactical training and range fires as well as how to teach marksmanship and the employment of the weapon systems to others. Employing tactics and techniques in all aspects of conventional and unconventional warfare environments. You train your cell in basic infantry tactics and in the use of small arms if you are able to submachine guns and machine guns, grenade launchers and forward observer procedures, meaning we're looking at something in order to blow it up with artillery which we will get to. Yes, it is possible for gorillas to have mortars. Don't worry about it. We'll teach you that stuff. And anti-armor weapon systems. You can assist your cell lead in operating and planning and implementing the tactical security plan for your cell. And they add the cell operations sergeant in, or sorry, they aid the, the cell operations sergeant in preparing area studies, brief bags, operation plans, concepts of the operation, and operations orders. The weapons guy aids with the most important part of the operations order, which is the execution. Weapons guy can organize, train, and assist, direct, or lead the cell if the cell lead and cell operations guy, who would be your second if you have six, if either of those two guys go down, then he would be third in control. As the weapons guy, it's imperative that you attend firearm and tactical classes as a student with the purpose of someday becoming instructor level qualified and teaching your cell all that you have learned. A good tactical leader will not become decisively engaged in a small unit's conflict, rather attack from a distance and ensure that his team can retrograde and live to fight another day. Attrition is the name of the game in guerrilla warfare. And in the paraphrase words of George S. Patton, you don't win by dying for your side. You win by making the other bastard die for his side. White Cell isn't going to shoot back, or very rarely will they have the ability to shoot back, because this is not something that they train for. They think that they are off limits. However, Blue Four is who Red Cell is going to end up having to fight or slay. If you are the weapons guy of a cell, the grenades or machine gun could be yours. Really, this is dependent on size. But again, if you are that team lead and you only have three, you're probably the team lead and the weapons guy, right? Now, medical. I understand you're not an 18 Delta. That's, that's perfectly fine. However, you do provide the emergency routine and limited definitive care for cell members. You train and advise direct and direct cell routine emergency and preventative medical care. All right, so this means that you at least have looked up how to take care of your feet, how to not get bugs and ticks out in the field, how to not get nasty things like tapeworm while you're out in the field. All right, that's that's bad stuff to have. So you can at least do that preventative medicine. You also train in the life, combat lifesaver and TCCC, your traumatic combat casualty care or tactical combat casualty care and other medical trainings and provide that preventative medicine. The medical guy prepares the medical portion of area studies, briefbacks, and operations plans and the concept of the operation and operations order. It is the medical guy's job to search out training and train the cell in life-saving medical treatment. All right, anybody can carry a gun, but you do need somebody who specializes in medical. If you are relaxed on or chillaxed on funds, right? And I totally get it because a lot of people are, right? We're too poor to be the guy that knows everything. So a lot of us go out and get trained on guns. Well, next year, if you are interested in medical, I would say that you forgo the gun training class. Get trained by one of your buddies who is the weapons guy, right? Maybe knows a little bit more about gunsmithing and taking care of the maintenance of firearms. And you go do the medical stuff. There are medical classes. There are wilderness medical classes. There is so many PCCC medical classes, and these often cost just a little bit less than going to like a tactical gun shooting class. They're probably around the 300 to 500 range, and that's good. And your engineer guy, you're not an 18 Charlie. Again, that's all right. 
If you're not an explosives expert, don't even worry about it. I would not fool around with explosives if I didn't know anything about them, right? However, anybody can swing a hammer and anybody can learn how to construct things. Your construction, field fortification, rigging, electrical wiring, and logistics. So you know where to find the things that you guys might need and you know how to build them. So that would be extremely important. Again, as the medical guy, I think the engineer would just be a really good subset because you're going to need a place to treat folks at some point, whether it is, hey, we're just out in the field or we need to build some latrines or whatever. You kind of sort of go hand in hand. Now, if you can make bombs, that's cool. You know, whatever you do, you boo. I'm not telling you to go find a place that's going to train you for that because that is going to be either in the military or highly fucking illegal. And certain books that are out there, like the uh, like the Anarchist Cookbook, those are designed to get you hurt. Maybe the first edition isn't, but from what I have heard, those new versions of the book are designed to get you hurt so that whenever you go in to get your hands fixed because you blew them the fuck off, the FBI can come clean you up and be like, hey, ha, thanks for reading our book, and we fucked you, right? So they've, they've been at this for a really long time. Now let's go to the combo guy. You're not an 18 Echo, and that's all right. However, the comms guy is going to need to know to how to install, operate, supervise, and maintain and control all communications and electronics equipment. You have to have a thorough grounding in communication basics and communications procedures. You're coming up with the comm shot plan, and it's your job to make sure that it's secret. Keep it secret. Keep it safe, Gandalf. Right? You might be a fucking tech wizard, and that's all right, but you also need to keep it away from the bad guys. And know in your mind that every single transmission that you make has probably been heard by somebody else. The NSA has all kinds of sensing equipment. They're listening to this right now. You are also probably the drone and immediate IR, ISR uh, gatherer. So do that. Have your drone. You're probably carrying a general purpose rifle. I'm not worried about you carrying a grenade launcher or a machine gun because I need to know where the bad guys be so I can maneuver on them. So ISR is probably your your imperative, right? Now your operations intel guy, this is the last dude in the stick. I get it, you're not an 18 Fox or a 180 Alpha, and that's all right. You are the second dude in the stack for command. You should probably have the second most experience or the most experience out of everybody. If there is enough of you, the responsibilities are going to be similar to an intelligence officer and being able to gather and study that intel in your area. You are responsible for all aspects of intelligence. The operations guy is going to plan, coordinate, and conduct continuous collection planning and planning of intelligence analysis in support of the cell's area study and intelligence effort. The intent of this analysis and evaluation is to identify information and intelligence gaps and to conduct the detailed operational preparation of the environment in support of the development of your plans of execution. Other than that, your duties are pretty much the same as the cell lead, right? You need to know basically everything. You need to be able to pick up where he's left off if he gets gunned down. All right, so that's it really for our video today. I hope you guys had a fun time. I'll let the the rest of this roll so you can hear me say in transmission. Uh, so yeah, so that. Uh, those are your six roles that I would put in a gorilla cell, right? Those are kind of your duties and responsibilities. As always, it's been Red Cell. Also, I want to, you know, shout out to all you damn dirty apes who take the time to watch this shit. And, uh, you know, say the good things on the internet, which is crazy. I, I honestly didn't expect any of this stuff to happen. I just wanted to get, I just want to get the word out, right? Thanks to you guys for, you know, watching. And, uh, as always, this has been Red Cell Gorilla in transmission.